Welcome to the Raspberry Pi workshop tutorials, brought to you by ModMyPi, Buyapi.ca, and PyShop.us. In this series of videos, we'll demonstrate nine projects that can be made using the YouTube workshop kit for Raspberry Pi. These projects are a great way to familiarize yourself with the Pi's input and output functions, as well as creating programs in Python that we'll use to control the Pi's hardware. In this second tutorial, LED on and off, we'll create a simple circuit to control LEDs using the Raspberry Pi and Python code. Because we need to do both physical wiring and programming, let's do the physical wiring first with the power off. This is very important to protect the GPIO pins and the delicate circuit board, as we don't want to touch the pins and short them out when there's power applied to the board. First, let's take a look at the GPIO numbering systems. Here's a map of the Raspberry Pi 3 GPIO header pins side by side with the Pi 3B board. They're oriented the same way, so this pin here corresponds to this pin here. And the lower right pin here, number 40, corresponds to this one on the board. The two different numbering systems that can be used in Python are called gpio.board and gpio.bcm. The .board numbers refer to this number of the pin, a two-digit numeric number. The BCM numbers refer to the bold characters in the name column, for example, 3.3v, gpio17, or ground. Our code for this tutorial uses the GPIO BCM numbering system, which means that we'll be referring to the two pins that we need as GPIO 17 and 27. Also the ground pin here. Counting down on the board to physically plug the wires in, we'll use the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh pins to plug our wires into. For those of you who've never used a solderless breadboard like this before, let's take a quick look. There are two things that are really, really useful to know. The first is that the vertical rails running down the outside of the board are continuous, so a wire plugged in here will be connected to a wire plugged in here. The horizontal rows in the middle are connected left to right, so this socket is connected to this socket, but the two halves of the board are not connected to each other. I've already installed two of the resistors and one of the LEDs. Make sure that when you place the LEDs in the board, the long leg, which is the positive one, goes in the upper of the two holes that you're using. We've used the negative leg to connect through the resistor to the negative or ground rail of the board. Now let's run our wires. We'll connect the black wire from the ground rail over to the third pin down on the right side of the Raspberry Pi board. The wiring diagram calls for a purple wire, but we don't have one, so we'll use red to go from the red LED positive terminal over to the seventh pin down on the Raspberry Pi. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now we'll use the blue wire to connect from the positive terminal of the LED over to the sixth pin on the Raspberry Pi. There we go. Now we're ready to plug in the Raspberry Pi and create the Python code using the nano editor. Let's change directories into our code folder. And create two new programs called two underscore on dot py and two underscore off dot py. We'll do this using the touch command.
Now open two underscore on dot py using nano so that we can paste our code in. Something very important to notice about this is the apostrophe that's included here in what's. We need to fix that as it's not a valid ASCII character and it will cause our program to fail if we run it like this. Use the cursor keys to move over to the apostrophe and delete it. Now that that's corrected, we're ready to save the program by exiting, agreeing to yes, and pressing enter again. Open to underscore off using nano again. And let's copy and paste the code for this also. Again, remove the apostrophe, or it will cause an error with your program. Let's take a closer look at the to underscore on file. It begins with the same declaration of what language should be used to interpret the program. Now, because we're using the GPIO opens, we need the GPIO library that describes what all of the hardware is and how it's mapped. We discussed that there were two different pin numbering systems earlier when we were looking at the GPIO pinout diagram. So let's make sure that we're referring to the pin numbers using the BCM system. These two lines describe which two GPIO pins we're going to set as outputs. And it'd be nice to know what's going on with the program as it runs. So we'll use the print command to say that the lights are going on on our screen. Finally, with all that configured, we can send a voltage or a high signal to pins 17 and 21, and this will light up our LEDs. The only two differences between our on and off programs will be sections five and six. We'll say lights off in the print command, and we'll set the two output pins to low instead of high. Now the rewarding part. Let's test our program by entering sudo python to underscore on dot py. It's normal to get some of these warnings on screen regarding the channel already being in use because we haven't done proper channel cleanup in the code. We'll fix this going forward in other programs, but for the moment just ignore it. Our program is successful. Both LEDs have turned on. Let's turn them off using sudo python to underscore off py. There we go. Thank you for watching and please follow us on social media for more Pi projects and resources.